Jeff, Christian Brewer, WFTV again. People have talked about how this draft is maybe one of the most loaded in a while. You have four picks. How do you weigh what you already know of the players from what they've done in college against what they'll do for you here in the gym or in interviews? Uh, you know, that's, that's the art of the draft as opposed to the science. And then we try to apply the science, right? So whatever sorts of analytical perspectives, obviously we do a lot of background checking. Um, we try to measure them in every possible way that we can. And ultimately that's what makes this, you know, such a, such a great business is that it just comes down to this, man. Like, who is this kid? Who is this person? Is he, is he one of us? And I believe that it's easier to identify the talent than it is the person. And we've got we've to look at both. We've got to bring in the right kind of people. I do think that, man, like you said, we have two first-round picks. We have two quality second-round picks. We get a lot of bites at the apple here. And, um, you know, I look forward to going through that process with our group. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's very important that we that we start to add some depth and, and, and uh, uh, look at a roster that we can really feel is, is trending the right way and is growing. And this is a huge opportunity to do this in the draft. Jeff, Keith Smith, RealJam.com. With the <clears throat> advent of two-way contracts under the new CBA coming in, as well as salaries continuing to climb, second round picks become increasingly valuable. John Hammond has hit on several of them. Uh, throughout the course of his career, as well as you, you two together hit on a, quite a few. How important was that in hiring him, knowing that you have the two extra this year and some extra in the future? Mm, great question. I, I don't look at bringing John Hammond in as we have to master the second round. I look at bringing John Hammond in as he's a great basketball guy, and one of the ancillary effects of that is we're going to do well in the second round. And, uh, you know, the second round is tough, <laughs> you know. That's why, you know, you have a lot of teams that just collect as many as they can to get as many bites of the apple, and, and they'll just spray buckshot and say, out of these, of these six picks, I hope two of them or one of them becomes a player, you know. But I feel that adding John and, and, and our whole group, it's not just John, it's, it's our whole group, we have to have a, a good approach to the kind of people that we're looking for, and, and I feel like we'll do well in the second round. And these are good second-round picks, these two that we have. Jeff, uh, John Denton again with OrlandoMagic.com. The fact that you've been a scout, video guy, assistant GM, player personnel, how much will that help you having that wide range of experience? And, and also, what, is, what does Masai mean to your career? He talked about, you know, when he took the job in Toronto, his one request was, i got to have Jeff Weltman here with me. Mm. Um, it won't help me at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, every draft class is a new group of guys you got to get to know. And I'm um, going to lean on all the smart guys that are in the room, and we're going to have some spirited debates. And uh, um, I, say, I say this, that, that when you approach a draft, uh, there, there are so many moving levers and push-pulls and different things to measure. And, th you know, there's an old expression, if the draft were to be held one day prior or one day after, it would be a completely different draft either way. You know, it's like opinions shift, and it's just a freeze frame of where people are at that moment. Um, I feel that, that uh, um, we're just well positioned this year, and it's a good draft, so I'm just confident that we're going to be able to help ourselves. You know, as to Masai, you know, uh, what has Masai meant to me? Um, you know, dear friend, mentor, confidant, um, you know, Masai, Masai made this, this point the other day. I was sitting in my office, and, and he said, how about this? You hired me in Denver, and now you work for me. John hired you in Milwaukee, and now he works for you. And you know what I say? All those conversations between Masai and me and John and me, it's the exact same conversation. It doesn't matter what the title is or the time or anything. It's just the same conversation. It's just how do we get better? And so, you know, Masai has been a huge part of my life and, and you know, uh, we'll stay close forever. But now it's time to move on and, and you know, open this chapter of my life. Yeah, yeah Mike Bianchi, going to have one for Alex, one, one for Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. Alex, all the experience you're hiring, the additional investment you're talking about making, um, it seems like this is a complete opposite of last time when you, when you made a big hire. Is this, is this you acknowledging that, Hey, that didn't work out so well. I need to go in a different direction. If it worked out well, Mike, we <laughs> wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, 
yeah, obviously it didn't work out. And um, you know, one of my primary goals, one of our primary goals coming into this process um, was to look for experience, um, to minimize our risk by you know minimizing the risk through experience. Um, and it was very evident as we went through the process um, that Jeff was everything about what we were looking for. Um, as a basketball executive, in terms of that level of experience and who he is as a person, um, fit is an incredibly important part of making these decisions. And as much as Jeff said that this had to work for him, this absolutely had to work for me. Because if we can't be open and honest and, and have a dialogue that's completely centered on getting better and winning, then this is not going to work. And that means everything else is not going to work. So yes, you know what? I learned from that experience. And um, yes, we did take a different approach. Um, and I'm confident this, this approach is going to have a much different outcome and is going to be a lot more successful and is going to get this organization back on track. Jeff, real quick. Um, yeah. Alex has talked about <clears throat> the culture of the Orlando Magic, the locker room, just around, and, and he wasn't happy with it. Did you guys talk about that, and what does that mean exactly? And, what, and how do you create a better culture? I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> I, I told Alex when we were in part of the interview process, whenever I hear that word culture, I think someone's, huh? Yeah, well, I think someone somewhere is making money. <laughs> it's a life coach somewhere or something out, something out there is making money. Um, it's just work, man. It's just work. And, and we've got to communicate. All the different points of our basketball operations have to be on the same page. We have to be thinking about winning. Every decision that everybody does has to be to win. And I don't know if that, the end product of that is culture but it's just work. It's working together. It's working hard. It's, 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 it's pushing each other. It's not being afraid to say things. And part of that is on me to, to set up channels for everybody to, to communicate. It's not just, you know, I don't want someone who just comes in and goes to their work and, you know, goes to their desk and like, okay, I had to punch out at five and I'm out. You know, it's like if, if, you, if you're doing something good, tell the next guy, maybe, maybe this could help you. You know, or, or, man, I just had this problem. Look out for this. You know, it's got to be, we've got to look out for each other. And so I don't know if you call that culture or what, but I, that, that's hopefully what we're going to try to build here. Philip Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic, Daily.com. <laughs> um, trying to slow down, sorry. <laughs> um, you, you've talked a lot of, you know, we've talked a lot about your, your experience throughout the league, but this will be your first time in the lead chair, you know, making decisions. <clears throat> you know, kind of the buck stops with you. How do you prepare yourself for that pressure and for that, that authority to be the final decision maker? Just do it. I don't know what else to say. I've done every part of it, and now I just got to do it. And I got to show you guys that we're going to good, that we're going to be good, and we're going to win. And um, I, I don't know. I can go on and on and on about, well, this and that, and here's what. I got to do it. And I can tell you that. My whole life's work has been in preparation of this day, and now I got to do it. Yeah.